Hello, everybody. My name's uh, Rick McCutcheon. I'm a Dynamics uh, Customer Engagement MVP. And uh, this afternoon, we're going to be looking at Easy Territory, one of the top ISV products for uh, the Dynamics family. And we're going to be talking about uh, mapping technologies and territory management. So hopefully, you'll enjoy what we, we have to offer today. We're going to record this and we'll edit out that front end. Uh, so we're going to record this and, and we'll post it later for those who missed today's session or if you want to share it with anybody else. So um, let me uh, introduce Benton and we'll talk a little bit about um, uh, Easy Territory. And one other thing, we've got a couple more sessions in this series coming up. The next one is Tuesday, March 5th, 2 o'clock on capacity planning strategies for dynamics all around mapping technologies. And a really interesting one, franchise boundary management for Dynamics 365 Retail, which will be airing on April 2nd at 2 o'clock Eastern. So, Benton, let's talk a little bit about easy territory, because I know this is a, a real interesting conversation when we talk about where easy territory came from and how you progressed to where you are now. Um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you're the leading um, geospatial provider in our dynamic space. So why don't you give us a little bit of background? Yeah, thanks, Rick. Thanks for the introduction and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us and talk a little bit about mapping and geospatial technology. So um, my background, I have a long history building uh, GIS and, and mapping solutions. And about uh, four and a half years ago, we got approached by Five Guys Burgers and Fries to um, help them come up with a solution to build and manage their franchise boundaries on an interactive map. And they were mapping all of their, or tracking all of their store locations in Dynamics. So um, they engaged with us to build uh, the beginnings of what is now Easy Territory. And they uh, used the application to manage and maintain their franchise boundaries all on a map. And so they can manually draw franchise boundaries in the major metro areas, or they can select entire states or counties to build franchise boundaries from. So, um, yeah, in addition to that, they wanted also to be able to pull in their data from Dynamics, their, all their store location data, so that they could see visually how their stores were performing um, week to date, year to date, quarter to date. And so um, that's really how we got our start, helping them build this add-on for Dynamics to, to um, display all the data. And it, and it really grew from there. Um, we supported, they wanted to be able to support weather overlays and demographic data so that they could do expansion planning and, and things like that. So yeah, that's, that's kind of how we got our start there, Rick. So, and now today you've got uh, hundreds of customers out there in, in the dynamic space. And, you know, I think today when we, we get into um, the benefits of easy territory for Dynamics 365, when you, we first, you know, talked about this subject of territory management, I remember um, I attended a session a few years ago now. It was uh, Sales and Marketing Management Magazine had a conference, and this came up over, you know, how to decide who your best sales team is, who your best sales person is. And I remember a professor from the University of Chicago came out and talked about a study they had completed where they looked at the top salespeople in organizations and tried to kind of build a, a framework of what made them the best salespeople. And what they found out is for the most part, these people had the best territories. And, you know, it, it's, it's funny when you start thinking about it and how many organizations have I worked for over the years where I'm looking at the best salesperson and wondering, do they have the best sales territory? So I think by taking these sort of geospatial models and putting them on top of our data, especially now when we can take the Dynamics 365 data, integrate it with our finance and operations or our business central data and kind of bring it back up, we can really have a great uh, snapshot of what's going on in our business from a sort of a geographical outlook. So, you know, I think what you're going to show us today is going to be very interesting for many of our audience members. Yeah, that's a good point. And certainly the, the ability to visualize the data on the map combined with your territories and being able to modify and manipulate 
run realignment scenarios and see how things are balanced or, or things that companies are really starting to look at now that the data can come in from in real time from dynamics and overlay on top of territories that you're building. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a few slides that kind of tee things up on um, what easy territory is, how it integrates with Dynamics 365. We're going to concentrate on um, Dynamics for sales today. There's going to be a few things that people may have questions about that we're going to show in our next session for field service, and I'll kind of point out where those are. But uh, if there's questions while we're going along, if you want to chat them, Rick's going to be monitoring the chat dialogue, and Rick can interject and throw out there. And certainly, Rick, if you have any points you'd like to stop me and, and ask about, feel free to, to do so. And then we'll have a, a short Q&A session at, at the very end. Okay, Benton, sounds great. I've got the chat window open, so uh, I think it's time to roll. Okay, perfect. So um, the primary benefits for Dynamics for Sales, number one, first and foremost, is being able to perform territory management and territory analysis scenarios. And that includes um, being able to uh, realign territories and then in bulk within Dynamics, update all of the uh, related territories for all the impacted records, whether that's accounts, leads, opportunities, or custom uh, entities that you've set up. So we'll be going through that scenario. Um, another really big scenario that, that um, we've helped a lot of customers with is lead assignment. So being able to take leads as they're coming into Dynamics and be able to um, set their territory based on their location, either using their zip code or using their spatial location on the map and setting that. So the next two use cases are what we call, or what I call salesperson productivity. So putting maps in the hands of your salespeople so that they're able to perform sales call and trip planning tasks, as well as travel time analysis. Uh, let's say that they're out in the field and they wanna be able to see, hey, how far can I get within 20 minutes of this meeting that I know that I'm going to be at and who's around me that I might want to also schedule a follow up with. And then finally, on the salesperson productivity standpoint is mobile maps. So this has been a hot topic over the past couple of years is being able to put maps in the hands of your salespeople so that when they're out in the field, if something changes on them, they can quickly pull up a map, see who else is around them that they may, may want to drop in on. So we're going to cover looking at all of these scenarios today. On our next call for field service, we'll start to look at um, service territory management, um, work order assignment, as well as zip code management and capacity planning and modeling. So that'll be something we'll look at in, in, on the next session. And then finally, dynamics for marketing, some of the use cases that we support there are just general geospatial business intelligence. So being able to look at the business data on the map and run queries and have nice visualizations and hotspots, as well as marketing list creation. So um, if we have time today, we'll create a quick marketing list and, and show you how that data gets pushed back into Dynamics. So the easy territory components, the easy territory uh, solution, it's a, it's a web application and a, and a set of REST services for integrating with Dynamics or with other systems as well. And uh, we either cloud host Easy Territory or we have an installer where you can install it on a virtual machine in the cloud that you manage and maintain or in a server in your data center. So we also have an accompanying managed solution for Dynamics. And we support um, all the way back to 2011 and all the way through current, online and on-prem. So in addition to the two base map options, we have um, Bing Maps integration and Azure Maps integration. And um, with those, we have the ability to use those platforms to geocode the data as well as have that information overlaid on top of the map. And so, uh, and all of the base map data that we have for the, the Bing Maps and, and Azure Maps data overlay such as the zip code data, the global states boundary data, that's data, data that we provide to help build territories from um, on the map. We also uh, have support for Azure Active Directory, ADFS, and OpenID Connect service providers for seamless sign-on experience. 
So a couple uh, quick customer successes, and then we'll jump right into a demo. So one of our um, customer successes is Morton Buildings. They've been a um, longtime Dynamics customer and a, and a customer of ours for a few years now. Um, they really manage uh, their application to um, to be able to over, to overlay all of their sales territories and keep those in alignment within Dynamics. Now their sales territories change quite frequently. They um, they're changing them um, on a day-to-day -day basis in some cases. So they needed a way to um, have easy territory or an application that could easily do bulk reassignments of territories as those were as those boundaries were changing. Um, they also use it integrated with their lead process. So when new leads come into their CRM, either through their website or through their call center, those leads are getting assigned to the appropriate salesperson based on their location. Um, another interesting um, story we like to tell is Paps Blue Ribbon. They use it to manage and maintain um, all of their different brand labels for their 200 and, uh, or so brands that they own. So they manage all of their distribution areas on the map. And then they have that information tied back into Dynamics to help uh, drive uh, when new, new retail locations come online, who would be their distributor. And so they're, they've built out uh, a large number of these maps in order to, to do that. They're also um, using easy territory to put maps into the hands of their salespeople so that they can see information uh, about retail locations on a map while they're out in the field. And then finally, one um, other success story is Dynamic Communities. So Dynamic Communities uses Easy Territory to manage all of their um, chapter boundaries, as well as overlay all of their member locations when they're planning events. So um, if, you're, if, if you're a member of Dynamic Communities and, and have registered on their portal, then that, that record when you first created your record would, would use Easy Territory to look up to see what chapter location you were assigned to. And then in addition to the, the chapter lookup, we also wrote a little custom widget that goes against our API that allows a, a user on their portal to look up to see what the nearest chapter location is to them. And so this gives the ability to enter in your full address or the zip code that you're living in and to see what chapter's nearest to you. So we've had a number of different use cases that have that have grown out of uh, the, the data that we're exposing through the API, and this is a good example of one of them. Okay, so for today's demo, uh, we have a, a fictitious company called Revolution Auto Parts, and what we're gonna do is walk through some of these scenarios for Dynamics 365 for sales uh, as, a, as an auto parts uh, manufacturer and distributor with a sales model where your sales reps are out there calling on dealer locations that, that deal and sell the products. Okay, so as we jump into the application uh, to or in, into CRM to begin with, there's a couple of things that uh, I want to just explain on how you really set up your um, D365 instance to then map the data. So one uh, important module or, or component that we have that's part of our uh, solution, our managed solution, is a um, geocode workflow plugin. This geocode workflow flow plugin actually uh, is, a, is a plugin that allows you to, within a workflow, call either Bing Maps or Azure Maps under the hood in order to geocode the data. Now to geocode the data while this is loading, geocoding means to take the address of a lead or of an account or of a contact and determine the latitude and longitude so that we can show it as a push pin on the map. So our plugin, our workflow plugin that's part of our managed solution allows you to configure this uh, as part of a workflow where you can then geocode and get and set the latitude and longitude either using Azure Maps or Bing Maps. So 
this plugin would be help is beneficial to set up early on for all the accounts that you want to be able to map. And so a commonly asked question is, well, what, it, what entities can we map from Dynamics? You can do the out of the box entities or you can do a custom entity if they have address information and a latitude longitude field on them. So once you set up this plugin, you can then use our bulk workflow utility which allows you to, in bulk, run a, pro a workflow. So you can bulk geocode all of your accounts or all of your leads or all of your contacts in your system through our bulk operation utility. And I'm gonna get into this utility in just a few more minutes when we start talking about territory realignment. Okay, so I just wanted to tee that up to just to say that um, when, when, when we look at all of the dots on the map that represent our business data from Dynamics, our accounts or our leads or our opportunities, this data has been geocoded in advance so that the data uh, can come out of CRM in an efficient manner and get plotted on the map in an efficient manner. So you're not sitting there waiting for minutes and minutes and minutes for it to, for it to map the data. So, Next, what I wanna talk about are the launch points into which you can get into a map from, from within Dynamics. So here on the screen, I have pulled up in an iframe, I have our easy territory application just embedded within an iframe. This is a common scenario for embedding the map. Um, not my favorite, just because you lose a lot of real estate when it comes to embedding it because of the, the big header bar here. So there are a few other launch points to get from Dynamics into, into a map, and I'll, I'll walk you through a couple of those. So one common way is um, from, the, from an accounts view, let me just go ahead and leave that. From the accounts view, we can um, filter down on an account. So if I were to look for just like a dealer 019, then we can select that and we can click map record and it will just launch the application and zoom in on that location and show that record on the map. Now I'm gonna come back to this example in just a few minutes when we start talking about the salesperson productivity aspect of, of the maps, but um, that's the second launch point. You can also embed easy territory within the account form or the lead form itself. Now this again, um, maybe not the best approach for displaying the map just because you lose a lot of real estate from the header bar, but is one that has been um, a common way to do that. Finally, we have the ability to, from, an from the advanced find dialog, perform a query and launch the map. And I'll just show you really briefly how that's done. So if you have, a, if you have an advanced find with all of your data, set and let's just choose dealer locations in this example. You can take these results from the map here and click this map records button and it will launch the application in its own tab and bring in that data from Dynamics. Now this data, just from a technical perspective for those CRM admins on the phone, this is making a fetch XML call through the Dynamics API to get this data out based on the, the, the advanced find query that we've, that we've built. So once the data is brought into the map, we can interact with it. So I already have a project set up that I'm, where I've got several views mapped out already that I'll start with here. Okay, so in this example, what we're gonna to start to look at are building out some sales territories, manipulating those sales territories, but overlaying them on top of the views of data that we've created from Dynamics. So in this case, we have leads, which are the blue dots, we have opportunities, which are the yellow dots, and we have accounts, which are the red dots. So opportunities and accounts are related to each other, that's why they're uh, yellow dots within red, but you can see visually on the map where you have accounts, where you have opportunity. So what we have the ability to do from here is to actually interact with the data. So if we wanted to drill down on a record and see the information about the account or about the opportunity, we can just um, quickly toggle through 
and select those records to see the information. Now these fields that are coming up in our call out, those are just coming straight from the advanced find query that we've done. So whatever fields we've set up in our advanced find query, that those are the fields that are being brought over in our, in our view. Now one very frequently asked question is um, the data that's being brought over is it, how is it limited or, or refined and filtered based on user? And I'll, I'll talk about that in a, in a few more in just a minute, but uh, in a nutshell, what it does is, is it respects the, the user credentials that are set up in CRM. So users are only gonna be able to allow to see data that they own or that their team owns on the map. Okay. So in addition to just putting uh, generic colors on leads accounts and opportunities, you can also uh, do some more advanced classification and filtering. So for example, if we had in our lead data, a rating column, hot, warm, and cold, then we can color the dots based on their, their, um, their rating. Or if on our account data for say we have a number of batteries sold columns. So we're an auto parts uh, distributor. We've sold batteries to all of these dealers. And if we want to be able to color code the dots based on the number of batteries sold, we can do that. And if I back the map out and show you here, turning off these, we can see that the, that the, that the account data has been color coded by the number of batteries sold. We can also drive the shape of the symbol based on a second column. So if we wanted to say, take a revenue column and drive the shape of the symbol based on that, we can do that as well. And so that would actually drive the shape of the symbol based on these revenue values for each of our dealer locations, as well as the number of batteries sold here, color coded as, the, um, as, as, as this different swatch colors. Okay, so in addition to overlaying and seeing the data on the map, you can also query the data just by using the drawing tools. So for example, I can draw a lasso around the location and then click finish. And then I can query all of the accounts that were within that lasso that I just drew and it would bring that up like so. So I'm gonna get into the, the drawing uh, and shape editor tools again in just a moment, but um, what I'll, what I'll do next is actually build out some territories for the state of Texas. So in this example, I have my territories already defined uh, in, in an Excel here. Now, a lot of organizations that we deal with, they have historically had some means to manage big list of zip codes, whether that's MapPoint, which is a discontinued product from Microsoft, or whether they've just done it through other means or methods. But what they would typically do to really get started would be to take the list of their current territory alignment and copy that from uh, Excel and paste it straight into, um, into Easy Territory. And so to do that, what we'll do is use our upload feature to actually upload and build these territories out just by copying and pasting them from one, let me just copy this. copy them from Excel into this dialog. We click start and what Easy Territory does is it starts to build out the polygon representations of these territories. And so while this is building out, one common question is, can you have multiple types of territories? And the answer is yes. Um, when we do the field service, we'll talk about how you can have sales territories, how you can have service territories. We work with some large organizations that have multiple product types and they would have different territory maps for those different product types where they would wanna have different territory maps for different levels of their hierarchy. So that's definitely possible. So what just got built out on the map here was um, all of our sales territories here in Texas. And we have some white space here and we're just gonna call those the corporate account, the, the, the corporate coverage area at this point. But uh, the, the t sales territories here are built out on the map as, as polygons. 
And those were just built from list of zip codes that represent the, the area or the coverage areas. Now, going through this scenario, this would be a day in the life of a sales manager that might be wanting to look at how their territory, how his sales reps territories are managed and look at the statistics on how many leads accounts and opportunities are, are within those. So what, what we can do from here is in our stats panel after our territories are built, we can see a breakdown of the total number of a leads accounts and opportunities that are within these territories. So this would give us a, a good visual indication of where territories might not be properly balanced. For example, this Houston territory has 410 accounts in it. And the reason that it's red is because the values in these columns are greater than um, two standard deviations from the mean. The yellow represents greater than one standard deviation from the mean of all of the values here. So in this statistics panel, you can export this data back out. You can export that to Excel. Um, but you can also use our realign function to realign some of these territories. And I'll show a quick demo on how that's done. So we can toggle and see, let's say that we wanted to realign uh, Fort Worth territory and the Dallas territory. So what we can do is we can turn on just the Fort Worth territory and the Dallas territory. And then again, we can look at the stats. So we see that there's, that there's some two stats here that we want to be able to balance on. We click realign. And let's say that we wanna go from having two territories here to having three. We, we can then, we're then taken through a wizard that allows us to specify total number of new territories. So we're gonna go from two to three, and then we're gonna click okay. And then it's gonna ask us what we want to align on. So in this case, we'll um, align on uh, dealer location. So we, we want the same number of dealer accounts in each territory. So we click okay. And then what our system does is it looks at for all of the zip codes for those two territories, it, it then goes through and tries to create three balanced territories from all of those zip codes. So we'll click no here. And so then what the result will be here, let me just turn these off, are three new territories that are balanced. Let's take a look and see how they're balanced. They have approximately 166 accounts in each of them. So I would say that those are pretty well balanced there. So another way that you can build territories, if you don't wanna use our auto realignment capability, if you just wanna make some small tweaks or if you want to uh, manually define the territories is by, um, is by using the drawing tools to select an area. So if we look here in this area of Waco, we see that there's big white space where we have a bunch of uh, accounts that are assigned to corporate, but we've hired somebody in Waco and we're gonna now carve out a territory from them. What we can do is you, we can use our drawing and selection tools to just lasso an area. So if I just lasso this area here, and then if I query all of the zip codes that are within that lasso that I drew, it's gonna bring those up into a results grid. And then what we can do is if I turn off everything and click make territory, it's gonna take me through uh, an option to uh, do a realign and to ignore those that are, that are turned off here. So I'll go ahead and, and, and click okay, and we'll call this territory Waco. Click okay. We're gonna build a single territory. And then this is gonna build out our Waco territory. And if we turn everything else back on, we see that it perfectly aligns there. And then let's go ahead and delete our query shape. So now we've built out our Waco territory here. If we wanted to see how it's aligned, we can just look down here in the results grid and we're able to see how, how it's aligned, total number of, of locations, total number of leads and opportunities there. So in this realignment scenario, we've, we've selected these zip codes and built out this territory. Now, what a manager would typically do from here is either export just this territory definition, 
or export the list as zip codes. So what I'll do is I'll just export the list as zip codes. And to do that, we just click on our territory, click parts here, and it's gonna bring up the 110 zip codes that make up this territory. And then we'll click the export button. And this is going to uh, give us the option to export this data. So if I want to export uh, this territory data out to, um, out to an Excel file, we can do that. And it's gonna give us, it's gonna give us a listing of the, the zip codes and the territories just like we put into, into Easy Territory to begin with. Okay. So from here, what the product has the ability to do is to have master edit projects that really maintain the, the current official territory alignment. So I already have that one set up. And we'll go ahead and click, and, and I'm gonna go to our, our listing of projects. And I have a project called Master Edits here. Now this Master Edits project is one that I as an admin of Easy Territory have access to. And within our administration panel, you can control who has access to these projects. You don't wanna give you know, all of your sales managers access to the one project that can update and manage all of your sales territories. You wanna have a central person that, that or, or a group of people that are really assigned with managing that. But I go ahead and click Done. So that's gonna bring up this project that, that has the alignment, the, the official alignment in it. And as you can see, we don't have a Waco territory at this point. So what we can do is then click upload and build out our Waco territory. And it builds out the Waco territory like so. And so then we can save this project and run our project plugin. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna officially commit this territory that we've built to the, um, to the database that our API uses to integrate with Dynamics. So I'll go ahead and click Done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come back into Dynamics. I just need to copy one value from my CR or from Easy Territory here. But I'm gonna come into Dynamics and go into the out of the box territory entity. Now, one common question that we always get is that do you have to use the out of the box territory entity? And the, and the answer is no, you don't have to use the out of the box territory entity. There are some, there's some advantages and disadvantages of using it and certainly would be able to go into more detail with, with anybody that would like to on that. But um, in this example, I'm using the out of the box territory entity. And so right now, uh, we don't have a Waco territory yet. So we'll just create the corresponding Waco territory here in CR in, in Dynamics. We'll set the ID here. You can set effective dates and end dates. Now these, these effective dates and end dates, these are just fields that, that you can add to the territory entity or to the custom entity that's stored in territories if you want to keep track of start and end dates for territories. Some companies like to do that, some companies don't. We'll get into why you might do that in just a few, but uh, just go ahead and click a, a start date there. Now you can also set the manager here. In my demo instance, I'm the only user, but if I had, uh, you know, if I worked for an organization that had lots of users, you could set the manager that's, that's responsible for this territory. And then that would drive record ownership. Um, you could also set a team uh, record there. And at this point, you can see we don't have any accounts assigned to the Waco territory yet because we haven't run the, the plugin that's going to then assign all of the accounts to the Waco territory. So I'll go ahead and click save and close. Now that our Waco territory is in place, what we can do is then come over to, um, or then talk about our second plugin that, that accompanies the geocode plugin. So the second plugin that I want to talk about today is our location lookup plugin. And that's a, a workflow plugin, just like the geocode plugin, that actually allows you to, um, set and define a territory on a record via a workflow. And so in this case, this example that I'm looking at here will be um, setting an, a, a territory on an account using our location lookup. So this plugin is configurable. There's some properties that you set that has it call our API and you specify either 
a postal code from the record or a latitude and longitude. If it's, if it's using a postal code, it will actually use the record's postal code to look up and say, hey, what territory do I belong in? If it's using the latitude and longitude, it, it uses that to make a spatial query to look up and see what territory the record belongs to. But in this case, I have a workflow. This is a very simple workflow here for aligning territories. You could have a very, you could build this out to be pretty complex to have uh, some rules that you follow on how territories get assigned and which records would get assigned. But in my example, it's a very, very basic example of that. So what I'm gonna do with that workflow is I'm gonna call it in bulk using our bulk uh, operation. So this bulk operation utility is very similar to the XRM toolbox bulk operation utility if anybody's used to using that. Um, but it can be triggered right here from within Dynamics. And we have some customers that use this to bulk uh, run workflows in bulk across uh, not only their, their easy territory workflows, but other workflows that they, that they set up. So what I can do is I can get a view. So in this case, I'm just gonna get a view of all of my um, dealer locations that are still assigned to Revolution Auto Parts Corporate. So that would be all the all the locations, all the account locations that were in that white space in the Waco area, as well as everything else. So what we do is we click bulk execute workflow and it goes through all of the records that um, met that criteria. And then it's gonna look up and see which territory they should be assigned to. So if there are records that are still outside of the Waco territory, those aren't gonna get touched. Those will still be assigned to corporate but the ones that are within the Waco territory through this territory workflow, they're going to be um, assigned based on their postal code and how it corresponds to the Waco po postal codes that made up the Waco territory. And so usually it takes just a second for that process to, to kick off and start going. But uh, once, it, once it starts going, you'll start to see the results here we can see that it's got seven of them now. It's got about 60 something still to go, but you can see that it's now assigning the way, the territory to the account here. And then of course your workflow could also set the owner based on that uh, as well. All right, so moving right along. Rick, any, any questions so far? Just, uh, just one question that uh, came from Susan in Toledo. She wanted to know um, from, uh, you're using zip codes in the US now, where else can you use zip codes, postal codes uh, globally to run your application? Okay, yeah, great question. So we have a, a number of different countries uh, zip code data or postal code data. We don't have it for every country in the world but we have it for a lot of the EU countries. We have it for Canada, Mexico, France, Germany, Switzerland, um, the UK. We also have a global um, country and global state boundary data set, as well as a US counties boundary data set and China district data set. So um, between all of those, you can, you can kind of mix and match. So if you're building your territories by zip code in the US, but by states in Europe or by countries in Europe, you can do that as well. So you can mix and match geographies when you're building these territories out. And, and so it supports being able to build them um, from different geographic uh, data sets and types. Uh, and I have one question, Benton. So mm -hmm. the, the accounts that are sort of on the fringe of a territory you have created, how would you go and grab those accounts and add them to that territory? Yeah, so all you would need to do that to do that would be to either use the lasso like I showed a little bit earlier, where you could just lasso an area, for example, click finish, click query, you grab these, uh, these zip codes. So the first step would be to um, query those zip codes and then add them to your, um, and then add them to your territory. So I would just realign them to my Waco territory. So this is first grabbing those zip codes that include those account locations. And then I would commit that change here by running our project plugin. And then once that's done, the only thing you would need to do is to come back into the bulk operation utility 
and run the um, and run the the aligned territories workflow on all of the Revolution Auto Parks corporate accounts there. And so you can you can run this. I'm doing a very simple example, but you could run this across a much larger data set if you wanted to. Fantastic. Looks great. Okay, perfect. Okay, so the next thing that I want to show is actually doing lead assignment. So with lead assignment, um, we use the same workflow plugin that we do for aligning territories to actually assign uh, a lead or assign an account to a territory. And that's just done on new record create. So for example, if I click um, new record here, and then I put in, you know, new, let's say that there's a new dealer that wants to sell um, auto revolution batteries. I could say new dealer location. I can give it a name. I can just say, I'll just say Mike Smith. And then when you put in your address, we can put in, let's see, 1685 retail road. Dallas, Texas, and we'll put in our zip code. Click done. Okay, so now that I've created this, we don't know what territory it belongs to yet, but when I save this, it's going to, it's going to trigger the workflow that has our geocode plugin set up on it, as well as our location territory lookup plugin. So it's going to first geocode the location, and then it's going to look up and see what territory it should be assigned to, and it's going to set that appropriately. This might take just a second to trigger. Let's go see if it's done yet. Yeah, sometimes these uh, workflows can take just a second to trigger, just for the sake of time real quick. Uh, let's do it one more time, see if it goes. That's uh, not quite there yet. Should be probably be done pretty shortly here. Um, but but what it does is it will set the get the latitude and longitude and then um, set the set the territory. So Benton, uh, there was a question that came in from Tim just a second ago, okay. asking about how weather can be a factor. He said there was uh, he saw that on one of your uh, pull downs. Yep, absolutely. So that was something that's been in the product since very early on. And that is um, a weather overlay that's a that's weather radar. And let's see here, or there's some weather. Yeah, pretty big um, swatch of red weather. And this is just pulling in um, the weather radar and it refreshes every 15 minutes here. So in the Five Guys example, they wanted it because when big weather patterns move across the US, that kind of um, affect the bakeries where they get their bread from and they have the bakeries make making the bread for them. So they wanted to use the weather overlay to see where there might be some disruptions in their supply chain there. Okay, excellent. And I'm in the middle of that big weather storm up north there right now. So uh, right there. What, a, yeah. what a great application. <laughs> cool. So when I look at what you're showing us here, Benton, um, you know, I spent my career doing really Salesforce automation projects and we look at the ROI and we look at the productivity of a field sales team, there's some of your, your most expensive personnel that you're putting in the field. So if I can realign them so they have better coverage or realign them so they can make even one or two more calls per week, that has a huge impact on the, the ROI I'm getting from that team. That's right, that's right, yep. And we did, we recently did an, an ROI um, article on exactly that is so that's really the, the biggest benefit that you get from adding a territory management solution to your CRM. You know, you get, you get the ability to map the data, you get the ability to build the territories, but what, but, but the ultimate thing that you get is the ability to make adjustments to the territory rapidly. So uh, being able to go through realignment scenarios, which in some organizations, they'll spend an entire quarter going through a realignment scenario. And if you can get that down to just a couple of weeks worth of effort to, to go through and do the analysis 
and make the, the decisions and then, and then be able to make the data changes very rapidly, that's really something that, that can improve uh, our ROI for an organization. Well, if you have a, you know, a large territory and, and, and if you're covering even North America, to realign this using Excel spreadsheets or something would be a, a tremendous effort and to be no way near as accurate as what, as what you're doing here. That's right. That's right. And that's how a lot of companies are doing it. Yeah. So let's make sure we add that uh, case study in the show notes once we publish this. Mm -hmm. Sure thing. So the, the workflow for the lead assignment finally completed here. So it set the latitude, longitude, and set the territory equals to, equal to Dallas there. Okay, so just moving right along here, I'll cover um, two more quick scenarios. Um, one is the salesperson productivity. Uh, I started to get into that a little bit earlier where we were saying, okay, let's say that I'm going to be visiting dealer um, zero, uh, 1019 here, and I wanted to map that location on the map and then see what else is around me. I know that I'm going to go visit this dealer location. I want to see who else is around me. So I'm a salesperson. I can map this location. I can see the details of this account and the, any associated opportunities on, on this account. I can see that here on the map, but then I can also start slowly backing the map out to see what else is around me. So I can see that there's some other locations around me that I may want to visit. So one scenario uh, would be, okay, I know I'm gonna be at this location at noon. I've got a meeting from noon to one. And then from there, I maybe wanna visit one more location, but I don't wanna drive too far. I wanna drive maybe um, 20 minutes at the most. So what you can do is you can use our travel time ring capability to, um, to, to create a 20 minute drive time ring from a location. So, uh, so I've, I've created a travel time ring. I could query all of the results in this travel time ring, but I'm probably just gonna visually look at this and say, hmm, this one looks interesting. Let me see who this is. So I can see, oh, here's the details of, of this account. Maybe I want to see how far and what the, what the travel um, route to visit these locations would be. So what we can do is you can select these two on the map. So I've selected these two locations. So I'm coming from this location and then going to this location. And if I want to create a route, and I know I'll be leaving there about one o'clock and then I'll set my stop delay as zero. And a tour means that I'm just driving from one point to another. <clears throat> Click create. It's gonna give me the total length. It's gonna give me my total route time here I can see the turn by turn details, you know, pretty simple, but you could do this with uh, a much larger route as well if you wanted to select a few stops and create an optimized route for that. So um, sales call planning and trip planning is a very common scenario. The, the final scenario is, is if I'm a salesperson, I'm out in the field and something's changed on me. Let's say that, um, let's say that a, an appointment's been canceled and I wanna see, hey, what else is around me? Who else is around me that I might be able to drop in on? So that gets into our, our mobile capability. So what I'm gonna do, I've pre-recorded this um, here and I'm just gonna uh, press play and kind of walk through this. So on the mobile device, what you can do, starting with uh, here in the unified client, you can um, get to a list of all of the projects that you have access to. So I'm going to, um, get to a list of my easy territory projects from the unified client. Here's one, I've got a sales rep view. I click on it and then I, I um, link into the application. Now again, we're not embedding the application really in the UI here, we're just, we're just linking directly to it. It's going through a single sign on experience so it doesn't even authenticate, you know, I don't have to enter in my credentials or anything and then it's pulling this data in. So this is, this is what we call our mobile view. It's a really slimmed down version of the application that allows you to um, see the data uh, on the map, but not all the functionality, not all the territory management functionality. You can drill down into the records, you can filter data on and off. So if we wanted to look at just the opportunities that are um, 28,000 and above, I can see those on a map. I can click on one of those locations and see the details, just like we saw the bubble when we were looking at it on our screen. Um, you can also um, 
use the phone's mobile mapping capability to route you from your current location to the stop that you want to go to. So in this case, it's routing me from Tallahassee, which is where we are, over to Austin, which is where my fake data is here. But, um, but we have integration that automatically launches either mobile, either um, Apple Maps on the iPhone or Google Maps on the Android. The other link that we have is the ability to deep link back into the unified client. So from the map, let's say you select an account and you want to get some more details on that account that maybe aren't in the bubble and in the application, you can deep link back into the account on the map. You can also do the travel time ring capability like I just showed, you can do that here on the map. So if you wanted to say, hey, who's within a 30 minute drive time of my current location, um, you can run that analysis and, and see that. All right. So that, so Ben, one of the, you know, the example you just showed us here, if, you know, if I'm managing a sales territory and let's say I was a manufacturer's rep and I called on hardware stores, mm -hmm. I could say, okay, here's the existing hardware stores in my territory. Um, go out to a, a data provider like DMB and say, okay, give me, all the hardware stores of a certain size um, in my postal code areas and really download that into my Dynamics 365 and really be able to target who I wanted to prospect because I don't want to get too far off of my um, existing customer routes, but um, I can always look for the right opportunities with the right prospects. That's exactly right. And there's, there's a number of customers <clears throat> that use third-party data services like DMB um, to get business data, bring that as leads into their CRM, and then map those so that they can see them while they're out in the field. Very common use case. All right. So I'll just quickly touch on the, our licensing and pricing model. So everything we've been talking about today is our enterprise version. So we offer a cloud-hosted and on-prem model for that. It starts with a single seat um, and the platform fee for that $7,400 a year. This price calculator is right on our website so you can use it to play around to get run different pricing scenarios. So in some cases we might have an organization that has let's say um, 20 sales managers that they wanna have access to the map and then they have 100 salespeople that they want to have mobile only access to. So what you can do is use our price calculator to calculate up what the total annual subscription would look like. So it is a subscription-based model. It's based on the number of seats of easy territory that you need, not the total number of, of dynamic seats that you have. That's a, a common question. And then the mobile only is, is really the slim down version of the application that I showed last here. That mobile only view will work on the desktop it just is a slimmed down version of the application, but the but you can give a mobile only view to your sales folks if you want to, um, if they don't need a full access seat to do territory management, things like that. So I know we're getting a little bit short on time, Rick, so I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'm gonna jump back over into the PowerPoint and wrap, wrap this up. Um, one of the uh, calls, calls uh, to action here, the next thing that you can do if you are interested in doing a trial of Easy Territory, we have a listing on AppSource, so you can get our managed solution straight from AppSource, and then um, you can also register at easyterritory.com for a free trial. That uh, get, send us a registration email with your information. We'll be in contact with you about uh, getting you set up with a free trial of, of Easy Territory. Some of the roadmap stuff that we're working on for 2019 that might be of interest is um, a data connector, data source connector for Power BI to be able to pull data into Power BI from an easy territory project. And I have an example set up um, here. Let me just show you an example report. So here's a, here's a territory report that's built from that statistics panel that we were showing within um, easy territory. So that direct connector to be able to pull in data from easy territory to build out some more visual reports that you might um, publish on your Power BI portal. So that's one thing that, that we're working on for roadmap as well as a map widget that would allow you to take any data sources that, that, you're, that you're connecting to in Power BI, map those and push that data into easy territory. 
And then finally, one of the big things, and we'll talk more about this on the, on the next call, but predictive analytics. So having easy territory, um, predict and model where you might need to make territory adjustments. That's one big expansion area that we have coming in 2019 or, or the predictive territory modeling. So I know I'm wrapping up the last part of this kind of quickly, but I, I do want to save time for Q&A here. If there are any, um, any other questions that have come in, Rick, through the chat, or if, if anybody has any questions right now, I'll be happy to, uh, to go through those. Um, Benton, so you know, I just want to make a statement right here on, when we look at the ROI on um, our Dynamics 365 investment. It's really the information we can get out of the data has the most value to us. And every time I sort of sit through your demo, it's sort of, I start thinking of all these different scenarios for time and territory management that can uh, really help an organization. Now, we talked the other day, so your initial fee for getting started with um, Easy Territory also includes the onboarding, correct? That's correct. So, so uh, every subscription comes with a certain number of hours, and it depends on what subscription type you have. Um, our enterprise comes with 16 hours of support. That's generally enough for an organization to get up and running with easy territory to set up those territory management workflows. For some organizations that have more complex territory management requirements or that require that we use the API to integrate with other ERP or internal systems that they may have, there may be additional support hours required. But generally our out of the box support hours are enough to get somebody up and running with the platform. Okay, great, fantastic. Well, I don't see any other questions coming in right now. Um, we'll uh, wait a few seconds and see if anybody else has anything they want to add. But if you wanna go back to the, our, our slide for our next session, um, that's coming up in a couple of weeks. So we're gonna talk about capacity planning strategies. So can you tell, tell us a little bit about what we're gonna cover there? Sure, so right now we've been looking at sales territories and in sales territories, you're mostly modeling based on either your current leads, accounts and opportunities. You know, there may be some historic sales data included in there, but you're really you know, doing your territory modeling on your sales information. With capacity planning, that would be more looking at historic service call data. So let's say that you had a year of service calls across a uh, number of territories, and you wanted to make sure that you had enough service technicians to cover the work. We'll go into um, some of the features that we didn't show today where you can run analysis on, on historic data to say, hey, based on the total number of service calls that you had over the past six months, you needed to have 10 FTE service techs working this location. So that's uh, so that'd be the highlight of that. We'll also go into using zip codes um, and, and using the out of the box zip codes that comes with field service, as well as doing automated um, uh, work order assignment through the resource planner and field service. Okay, fantastic. So I think we'll just close off now since we don't have any more questions. Um, so the people on this call, have a look out. We're going to be posting the video um, shortly with uh, some supporting documents that we talked about so you can review this again and uh, share it with your colleagues. But Benton, I got to thank you uh, for a great presentation today and really showing us what the ROI is on uh, spatial mapping um, for Dynamics 365. You're welcome, Rick. And thank you everyone for joining. And please feel free to reach out to us with any questions or follow-ups. And please be on the lookout for a copy of this video. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.